Heroes of the Storm, PTR Notes, October 9th. The balance components of this patch, everything that isn't Zul'jin, Muradin and Junkrat, should be live today on October 11th on Wednesday. At least I heard so, that the patch, the balance of it will go through very soon this week. But of course when Junkrat comes out, which is Tuesday next week on the 17th and on the 18th of October in Wednesday, uh, Wednesday in the Europe's that's when Zuljin Murdin and Junkrat come out so without further ado this is the Junkrat patch he's a hero from uh, Hearthstone yeah, from Overwatch that is a ranged assassin with low health bar no mana pool he can use all his abilities while he moves and his auto attack splashes in a small circle for 100% of its damage. We'll try to go through all the changes a quick once over. We can take a quick preview look at it. <coughs> so, to begin with, blah blah blah, some e economy and items and stuff, chests. You can read that for yourself. New hero, Junkrat. I'll show him in the try mode after this preview at the end of the video. You can go straight there if you'd like. I'll put the timestamp in the chat. But basically he's got a frag launcher, four ammunition grenades. He's got a mine that he can blow up on demand whenever he wants. You can have one at a time. When you blow away an enemy, they get pushed into the direction that they were standing off the center of the mine. You can also blow yourself off uh, you damage enemies, but you don't take any damage yourself. Steel Trap is a trap that you put somewhere. If an enemy walks over it, they get rooted and damaged. Riptire is a remote operatable ravenous spirit-like summon with health bar that you can steer and explode upon a target. Rocket Ride is where you basically... You don't kill yourself, but you do disappear, come back at the Hall of Storms, and you give a quarter takedown. And you do a massive explosion, and you proc your death trait. But it is not killing yourself. Greetings, friend. Grub -chan. And when you respawn, you have a lot of bonus movement speed. 250% move speed. Moving on. Gaul. Now it's more apparent when Ogre Rage is active. Finally, a nerf to Dragon Becomes Me upgrade on Genji. Slightly less CDR per swing. Small Kalthizad buffs. A little bit of help on Frost Blast. Cooldown reduced, 10 seconds. Mana reduced. That is not enough reason to take it, I think. I think what it would need is quicker travel time. Because it's too easy to isolate yourself from your team where you don't root all your allies. But maybe it just needs to be one boat. Who knows? Strip Shields is a little bit of buff, but, you know, not all that much. Oh, by the way, I always increase the size, don't I? Makes it easier to read along. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Sh Shields go up a bit. In uh, Shields, not too much, just a bit. A little bit of extra slow on the not-so-much-taken talent. Oh wait, this is the 60% slow. Oh yeah, this is popular. Wow, two seconds. They just nerfed it from 70 to 60% slow and now they increase the duration. And a refund on the CDR chain talent. That's good. Lunara, wisp buffs. If you ever need a wisp, I do recommend picking Lunara. Oh wait, this is the Frost Nova talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, move cooldown reduced from five to one second. So, so you can keep moving it every one second instead of every five, which is nice. And you need two hits to take down the wisp instead of one. More percentage based nerf on Malthael. Now I'm just going to share my competitive experience with Malthael recently. I just casted the crucible of the HCC, which is pro am division pro versus am. It is the, let's say the top six to 10 teams in Europe, kind of, and they never picked mouth and he saw about five second ban phase bans out of 13 games. But he wasn't picked. But he was apparently deemed to be dangerous enough in second ban phase only. Uh, I don't know that he, whether he sees that much more play around the world. But this was open division versus pro division games. And it makes his niche percentage damage a little bit weaker. I think Malthiel is pretty good. But I don't know if it was needed. Melee Assassins, already not very easy to factor into drafts. The big Zul'jin rework. This is big news for me. Because I love Zul'jin and I have a lot of games on him. I'll just start things off by saying this. And this is the one that people tend to generally forget about when they read the rest of his traits. Of his rework. Of his quests. And they're all very exciting and they're going to seem very strong and OP. But don't forget this, which uh, constitutes a rather large nerf of about, what is it, 13%? 12%. 12 percent auto attack damage nerf should not be forgotten. But you want Axe was added as a baseline quest. It's the same as before. Five hits is one damage. And it was at 120 stacks, you get your bonus range. Now, after 75, that's a lot faster. Makes the rest of the attacks easier to complete as well. And once you get 150, your Twin Cleave will revolve twice, which is the old level 16 talent choice. So it's been embedded. Furthermore, the Twin Cleave was also uh, with an increase in cooldown when you pick that talent. That is no longer a thing. However, base cooldown did increase. From 8 to 10. Mana cost accordingly. Whereas Grievous Throw will now last 2 seconds less long. 5% more health when you regen. So some nerfs. Buff and a buff. Next up. You want Axe of course. It's gone. It's baseline. Bone Slicer. Now you no longer have a removal of the effect after 3, second, after three attacks. But you keep it for the full 6 seconds. Furthermore. Mana return and pierce. Instead of pierce one enemy for a total of two, you can pierce multiples. I think this is very strong and it's a great pick when you don't need, uh, when you can't get quest stacks easily due to the map or draft. If you play quick match and everyone is ranged, it's not easy to get a lot of auto attacks and it's not safe. If you play Cursed Hollow, not easy to get a lot of auto attacks. So keep it in mind as a valid choice. Headhunter is now still kill one of all enemy heroes. Each kill gets your damage by 2% up, but you must kill the unique ones. Also extra range. And this stacks up with your you want axe. So you can have a total of start at 5.5, go to 6.6 .6 range, which is uh, like Raynor, and then get to 7.7, .7, which is 0.1 less than Raynor with Nexus Frenzy at 20, but it's more than no Nexus Frenzy Raynor. So obviously this is really good range, very strong, but you can't always complete this quest. I just played one game of Zul'jin to try it out. If you have an enemy Abathur, you should not be getting it. By the way, it says kill, it means participate in a takedown. I think that means if someone dies across the map who you haven't interacted with in the last few seconds, it doesn't count as a takedown. If you've damaged them, they move somewhere else, within seconds they die, it does count as a takedown. If you don't damage them, you don't last hit them, but they die near you, also a takedown. It's, uh, the rules are not defined anywhere, but this is how it works. So you can't always get this so easily, but if you get it, you get 10% bonus damage. Keep in mind, when the game says 
damage, it means both basic attacks and spells, which includes guillotine, spinny axes, and grievous throw, and your auto attacks. If the game says armor, it also means both physical and spell. So 10% across the board, really nice. Again, not an easy quest. Recklessness is 10% bonus auto attack damage while you're below three quarters life. 20% spell power while you're below a half. Not bad, not bad. And then he has one more at level one. No, that's it, three level ones, yeah, there you go. So this is only auto and this is spell. Troll's Blood, more healing, and max mana sustain, if you complete it. Pretty big deal. Amani Rage, instantly lose 50% of your current health, not max, key point, and regain it over 6 seconds. So if you're 20% life, you will lose only 10% life, and you gain armor for 10 armor over the next 6 seconds, and you gain back that original 10%. But if you're full, you go back exactly to half, right? So it kind of depends how much life you have, how much you actually lose. Why would you want it? Well, his trait gives auto attack speed. Now also, the lower you are, you can benefit from these bonuses, as well as guillotine itself. So plenty of different bonuses, also depending on how you spec talents. You get back all the health you lost. Key point, of course, being that you can die during your low health part, and that you get a little bit of armor while you get it back. Keep in mind also that if you have an Uther who can heal you and you're at 70%, you do a Mani Rage, he can immediately heal you to full, maybe, or near full, and then you have regen and armor near your full life that can top you off for future damage. So there's a number of cool applications of it, but the most obvious one is do a nice guillotine. Food Shuffle is 10 seconds cooldown. Um, and you get a passive reduction of mana and cooldown on regen. And you can also activate it to remove all slow and root. At level 4, with a 10 second cooldown, this is a very potent talent. In addition to the regeneration buffs. Pretty cool. Vicious Assault. Grievous Throws bonus damage is increased by 30%. Not bad. Arcanite Axis. Passively reduce Twin Cleave cooldown, and every time you hit enemies, you get a permanent damage increase on Twin Cleave. Pretty darn cool if we're running Mage Build. And then Ferocity, which is the 35% bonus attack speed, down from 16. Keep in mind, very key, before at level 4 you had Let the Killing Begin, which was a 30%, up to 30% auto attack speed increase at level 4, it was a huge power spike, it was a really big deal for Zojin to get it that early. And the grace period where it wouldn't go away was really forgiving. Very, very good. It's an extremely powerful talent. You find it now at level 16. They say it was just moved, but it's also 40% move speed, uh, attack speed now. 40% instead of what I believe it used to be 30%. That's a pretty big deal. Alts are unchanged. Eye of Zul'jin got nerfed. Uh, before you had a 25% move speed on a single Q on a hero. Now you have to have consecutive basic attacks. Nine attacks to outstrip your previous instant move speed. So Zul'jin's mobility, which is non-existent without that Q talent that is on live service now, is severely nerfed. Even when you pick this... You need 9 attacks on Zul'jin, on enemy heroes, to get better movement speed than you got from a single Q, which is practically instantly traveling. Between 9 and 10 attacks, you have more mobility than you used to have, but it's only a 2 second grace period, which is very short, because you need to hit heroes, not minions, in order to keep it up. I think this is... The biggest loss of Sujin together with the 12% auto attack damage nerf. And it does worry me. It's very unforgiving. Like for hatred on Vala. Va Vala rework when she got the new level 4 auto attack talent. Number of other things. 
they had to buff her hatred upkeep. It's still fairly low, but it's better than it was. And uh, this this really concerns me for Zuljin's viability, despite the potential bonus range that he can get here and there. However, as they say in the United States, it is what it is. Lactate moved from level 16. This is the uh, bonus slow from 30% to 60%. Uh, and Snare has been halved in duration and increased in cooldown. Uh, yes, Lacerate. Lacerate. But it has moved forward from 20 to 13. Swirling Death obviously is embedded in a level 1. Let the killing begin, we mention it. And wrong place, wrong time is what it is still. Bonus crit at the apex. However, that's not all. You also get additional 5 stacks if you want to axe when you do that. I still think it's pretty weak. But if you're really keen on running spell build, why the heck not? Plus, you get that ensnare wrong place, wrong time synergy a full three, four levels earlier. Before you needed a 16 and a 20. Now you get a 13 and a 16. Hmm, possible. No Mercy is ignore armor, but they must be marked with Grievous Throw. And remember, Grievous Throw will only have three hits for you. So you must, first of all, hit your Q skill shot. Secondly, you want three attacks within that six second period to make use of it. And only those ignore armor. This is very good if you combine it with the level 1 Bone Slicer, where you no longer remove it after 3. I actually think you should not take No Mercy unless you get that level 1. There might be situations where you want to do that, but I don't think so. I don't think you want that. It's like, I want it? No, you don't. Amani Resilience also increases the 1 second duration now. In addition to the other effects, which is the lifesteal. Uh, after it ends. Buzzsaw. Instantly kill a hero. No. If you kill a hero, instantly heal to full health. An additional added functionality. Very interesting. If you are going for guillotine anyway, you can't pick this. And the only other one now, since its snare is gone, is forest medicine. Which is no channel, no interrupt. So it's a straight up Rainer heal. <laughs> So not a surprise that people call Zojin the new Rainer. If you want to be more like Rainer, Forest Medicine. So I think if you go Guillotine build, yes you can still do this. But uh, I would say Bustle is pretty darn good. But actually Bustle is not very good, is it? Because you can't guarantee a kill. You either miss it, or it wasn't enough to kill them. Or you die before it lands. No, I don't know. I guess it's pretty good, but it's it's quite tough. Forest Medicine is much easier to get value out of. The Guillotine upgrade also has a grace period. Oh, okay. It must be like one or two seconds, right? So no developer updates yet. No developer comments. But they said they will add it when it actually goes live. Which is in about five days. No, six days from now. Moving on. Abathur. Big nerf to his ultimate Evo cooldown. Which I think is good. 50 seconds was too OP. It basically meant once every team fight, even if you waste it, you'll still have it for the next tribute, etc. Um, generally speaking, I think it's fair. And it also makes Monstrosity a more viable choice by comparison. Abathur does have a low win rate in the ladder, but he has a high win rate in pro games. I think it was too good. It was hard to play around the cooldown. However, this does not compensate duly for it nor will it do much favor for abathur in uh in the win rates on the ladder so this is a very painful loss for abba and he'll be more of a specialist it was very normal to get full uh to get top hero damage as abathur in a team <coughs> and now it will not be that likely anymore i would say uh especially if it pushes people towards monstrosity but it will make him a good pusher I personally, it hurts, but I don't mind it too much. I would have wished 
that this was compensated a little bit more in his power in different areas. But it is what it is. Nesibo. A lot less health. A little bit more spider damage. Just a bit. Less toad damage. But wait, there's a reason. More stacks from health. Of health per stack. So he can get this back. If he has enough stacks. Since he gets two more per stack. But he loses 136 life. At level 1, he would need to get 68 stacks in order to have his health back. But because his health scales up, the gap becomes higher and higher. So he'll never get it back, will he? I think. Of course, if you get 68 stacks at level 1, you'll level up already. A big voodoo can help though. But Big Voodoo always helped. Anyway, uh, Ravenous Spirit from slightly further away, which is nice because it's definitely the far weaker ult. Superstition. They say they want more counterplay for it. So before it was 50% spell armor, 30% vulnerability to physical. Period. That means that in some comps, some drafts, simply unkillable by mages and by Sonya, etc. Now you can stop the spell power if you basic attack him. The spell armor. It's more counterplay. I think that's a great change. I don't know if the numbers are quite right. But I think it's a great change. I feel like maybe it should remove it for two seconds. But yeah. I like the idea of it a lot. Ice block will probably be more popular. And also the Toads give 25% across the board armor. Which seems better than 40% single source conditional. Of course Toads are also conditional. You need to hit a hero with it. But generally it shouldn't be too hard. Um, Spider Colony now when it no longer have double cooldown reduction. But instead CDR of Wall of Zombies and Plague Toads by a quarter second per little nip nip nip. Seeing as how spiders can get between 5 to 20 nibbles per proc. That's not bad. That's between 1.25 to 5 seconds CDR on those. Not bad. And this is why they nerfed damage for toads. And for... Well, for zombie they didn't really change it. And here is the explanation. Feel free to pause the video to read it yourself. Probius. Health increase on pylons. A little bit more damage on the cannon quest. And less long shield duration to a slightly higher shield on shield battery. Which is the best and most popular level 13 talent. Maybe. Maybe. Zagara. Less health. And the regen. But more moss. Support. Ana. Basic attack damage increased by 10%. But her grenade at level 4 can no longer apply doses. It was 2-2 two, two al along sleep dart and grenade. Now it's only 3 on sleep dart. That's a pretty big nerf to her wave clear. Which was already one of the worst in the game. But of course, her basic attack damage will help with the wave clear a little bit. Brightwing. Less shields. This was pretty strong talent. It practically invalidated cleanse. It merited picking. A little bit of a nerf. I think it's fair. A little bit of a nerf. I guess it's fair. And nerf on Emerald Wind. I didn't know Brightwing was overperforming. But I guess it's just part of the recent slew of support nerfs in an effort to undermine the double support meta but i think the biggest buff to the support meta whether it's one or two is any heroes having armor armor of course just like in warcraft 3 armor and agility heroes merit heals because heals are worth more on armor targets whereas big health bar chunks without armor are less easy to heal and less valuable. 
So this is all pretty, yeah, it's pretty nerfed. I don't know if it'll make single support meta. Uh, buff to the two less used talents. They don't want to give the move speed of Iron Fist to the other two traits. So instead, a bit of a health buff and even more CDR on inside. Whereas the main reason people take Iron Fist isn't for the damage, but it's for the move speed. Also the damage, but the move speed is pretty great. I feel like if they just added 15%, 15% move speed to Iron Fist 30, I think that would be pretty nice too. But... Still, it's very valid buffs that may just see more inside Karazine play. Don't go Transcendence though, I think. Tr try it though, try it out, see how it feels, but I think inside is better. Because you can punch a minion, then go to your allies to heal, whereas Transcendence, you need to be where the action is, where your hurt allies are. And if they are not near hittable things, they will not get heals from Transcendence. Whereas inside, you can do a lot more planning and independence. It's hard enough to heal people with Karazim as it is. A little bit less health, so it will be easier to Mocus Feralis. Clear. From 12 to 8, now from 12 to 9, if you complete this quest. On the grenade. 6% max health instead of 8. So not 5 times 8 is 40. I believe it was. 5 times 6 is 30 now. Second opinion, no more one second spam if you hit two, but two second spam. Stukov. Nerf the health. Nerf his heal. Nerf his spine launcher damage. Used to be from 100 to 50%, then from 100 to 30, uh, 70%. Now it's from 100 to 60%. Spine launcher did feel very good. I tried him recently, Stukov, while I was at the Crucible. Now it's an in between. Popping pustules, a little bit more damage. Super strain. Something, something. Universal carrier. More heal for the infinite heal that goes through Stukov. No more eye infection. That's good. Oh wait, you're not talking about me? Aha, no more blind on W at 16. Pity, people said. Though no one picked it. But it's nice to pretend to be offended. It's 2017 after all. Ogre height, more apparent. That's good. Diva. If you don't take damage, your cooldown from Q goes from 10 to 5. However, now it will go from 10 to 3 if you don't take damage. So you can really Q rush across the map. But you don't have the bonus movement speed from the other one. And you don't have the bonus damage. But maybe it'll finally make it pickable. It's good. Good buff. 25 quest to get one second off per hero you hit afterwards. But not the bonus damage or the move speed. Wait, cooldown reduction for dealing or taking damage? Wait, I need to read this again. I thought I know what this is, but uh, maybe I don't. Hold on a sec. Hold up, guys. Hold up. Talent calc. I thought I knew what it was. Rush down. If she neither takes nor deals damage, CDR 5. Ah, they write it weird, but it is what I thought it is. Now CDR 7. It is what... It, yeah. Okay. Got it. It's like dealing or taking damage gives you more... Like every time you take damage you get 7 CDR. Wow. It's like you could have minus 5 million CDR. <laughs> no. It is what it is. Okay. Pro moves. You keep your bonus move a little bit longer. Diverting power. You go from 85 to 35 move speed before during your giant v now you go from 85 that's her base by the way from 85 to 55 so instead of 35 55 so relative to each other that's a 57 percent movement speed increase not 57 as heroes calc it relative to each other 
You're 57% faster while you're Ving. Pretty cool. Nuclear option. Wait three seconds longer. Seven instead of four. Normally 50% bonus. Now 70. Wow. Nice combination with the newly buffed Kel'Thuzad Frostblast. Stop and pop. Bunny hop, don't move. Triple damage. Nice combination with Moshpit, I suppose. But you're going to take Mecha Fall, right? Yeah. Concussive Pulse. What's that again? Open my talent calc again. Oh, yes. <laughs> Get back! It's where she can become Lucio. Uh, cooldown 8, now 7. Get back again. Garrosh. No longer plus one second on taunt. AoE taunt. Johanna. Bonus health increase. I think they listened to Reddit. Johanna, my crusader is ruined. I did read in that thread that Breeze from Fnatic, I believe he's good, said that Johanna is better post rework. But everyone on Reddit thought it was a nerf. And I thought it was a nerf too. But Breeze... And this is hearsay. I haven't heard it from him. But I read I read it on Reddit. So, buffs anyway. I think it's good. Uh, more sl longer slow. More shield on the D. Uh, more damage on the Q if you hit 2. And a little bit more blessed hammer damage. Merlin, rework. Less auto attack damage. Baseline quest. If you hit 25 heroes with a small bonus conditional. One CDR on your Stormbolt per attack. And also Pierce. Mana cost reductions. Because this ain't Alpha anymore. He's a new hero now. Uh, perfect Storm. No longer reduces mana cost, but it is still what it was. 5 damage per Q. Uh, it kind of makes sense since Piercing Bolt is so accessible now without sacrificing a 7. Crowd Control is gone. <laughs> On Braxis was pretty nice. It was a really good part of Wave Clear that I believe was underrated, but it's gone. Uh, Sledgehammer no longer quintuples the damage, but quadruples it against PvE. Reverb does... One half second longer slow and attack. Wait. From half a second? What? But it's two and a half seconds. Oh. It's, it's poorly written. The buff of extra slow is three and a half instead of the original two and a half before it went from two and a half to three half a second extra bonus slow from the talent thunderburn now needs to require a hero hit to get the second proc and it also does the attack speed slow on the second one but not the movement speed at least it doesn't say so here or in game A lot of stuff gone, which is actually a pretty big deal, but it's embedded partially in other talents. Heavy impact is now at 7, does a half second stun. Give him the axe is smaller damage, but it comes at level 7. Skullcracker no longer gives attack speed, but you do get bonus damage on every third hit. Keeping in mind though that his base damage was nerfed from 97 to 88, about, about 10%. Dwarf launch is now... It's still at 16. A little bit less range. No radius. Who cares about that anyway? Actually, you do care because you need to hit a hero to get your CDR. From 10 to 7 then. Instead of 10 and staying 10, you bring it down by 3. So from 10 to 7. Of course, by the time you arrive, it was already 6. Stone form. Less healing. Unstoppable force used to be relentless. And duration. Now instead, it's armor and CDR on your W and E when you auto-attack. 
any auto attack, not just against heroes. So, 20 armor, 45 when you jump in, because 20 plus 25. And a lot of thunderclaps and dwarf tosses. Not bad. Grand Slam now gives you more charges if you kill heroes with it or within 3 second grace period. Also level 13, Burning Rage is gone but it's replaced by a better Burning Rage. When you auto attack heroes that are CC'd, you get double Burning Rage. So his wave clear is weaker in general, but if there are heroes, it is better, both in Thunderburn as well as your Rage. And he still has other level 13s, which are Thunderstrike, triple damage when you W1 target, as well as healing static. And that's the new Muradin. And you can see him here in game. I picked uh, a talent build, namely of Perfect Storm. You get that uh, damage. You see you have two quests for it now. One is just straight up damage increase. Um, and the other one is your baseline quest that gives you the uh, piercing eventually and uh, CDR on basic attacks. At level 4 I took the Thunderburn. If you hit the hero it does another proc. Uh, Skullcracker where 3 attacks give you a mini stun and a crit. Took Avatar. Uh, I have Burning Rage which is 42, 42, 42 but when you auto it is... When you auto a CC target, it's 83, 83, 83, about three times basically, because it's three seconds. Uh, dwarf launch, get this range. When you hit, you get the six second CDR because it takes a second to fly that far. And of course, unstoppable force, which uh, when you have avatar, if you look at my W and E talents, that's the CDR, right? Half a second extra. So it's pretty cool, you get a lot of procs. If you were to combine that with heavy impact, get a lot of stuns. Pretty nasty. So he is a CC machine, but his wave clear is a little bit weaker. And uh, yeah, survivability as well, in fact. Moving on to the rest. Uh, yeah, that was Muradin. Then a few other things, like some new skins and stuff. Finally, a new Greymane skin, uh, which isn't a Balchmane lion guy with a uh, top hat circus guy. Wolf and Stein. Sounds familiar. Sounds like a racing game I know. Uh, Vampire Slayer Valera. I encourage you when you don't ever pick Valera to combine it with Vala Vampire Hunter. They look a little bit similar. Maximum confusion. Uh, yeah, some cool stuff. Bug fixes. And UI. I haven't told you about UI yet. Uh, yeah. Lunara can now jump over allies again. Most of the others, I think, were not known to you, probably. But this one was known. Uh, you had one range feral lunch or two range feral lunch before. It was a bug. Fix for now. Uh, yeah, but there's some UI changes as well, which I haven't shown you yet. And it is as follows. Murden warns Arthur's is missing. Hold down Alt key, alternate, and left click a portrait. Nice to warn your allies that they're missing. If they aren't missing and they're currently showing somewhere on the map, it will be written as Murden wants to kill Arthur's. So it's a little bit confusing, I guess, in the sense that if you are to want to ping that he's missing, but he just walks past allied vision, even momentarily, either an ally or a vision tool in a, in a, in a bush, or he just shows up at lane, you suddenly say you want to kill him. All your allies, as, of, as always, of course, will listen to you, and they will all leave their lane, stop soaking, and go kill Arthas in the top lane. So it is not... 100% perfect. I wish you could have a key that only says he's missing when he's missing and doesn't work if he shows up because after all he's not missing so why would you be giving the command? 
but it's still really cool. Try to use it properly. Try to use it soon after they leave Vision so that you will not have that issue where... I mean, it's too late anyway once they show up in lane, right? But it's really cool. And we've... I mean, we've been wanting this, right? It's amazing. Uh, for allies, it has a unique application because he's a bot, so it doesn't really work how it should. But if you do it for dead enemies, which I can actually show, that's kind of interesting as well. I don't know if... I, yeah. <laughs> it says, warns that Abathur will respawn soon. Which is a pretty darn cool command. Just a little bit of extra notification. For example, Diablo with 100 souls dies and you are cognizant of that fact. But your allies may not be. And they think they can fight because Diablo is dead. You quickly ping, Diablo will come back in 3.5 seconds. And... Uh, Maybe your allies will think better of it than to do a 5v5 without heroic cooldowns available. So overall, pretty cool changes and looking forward to trying them. I've just tried Siljin and I still want to try Murdin and Junkrat a little bit more. That seems pretty good. That is within the period of 4 seconds. You have 12 grenades in 4 seconds. Very bursty. Very good in teamfights.